Hello all. In this short podcast, I will be showing you inferential statistics for a single mean using SPSS. Now, this is a um, situation when we don't know the standard deviation of the population. So sigma is not known. What's known now, it's only the X bar, which is the mean of the sample, and S, which is standard deviation of the sample. Okay? So what we will do today, we will use SPSS to test some hypotheses and to find the confidence interval. Okay? Uh, for this podcast, I will be using the data set GSS2008.sav, and that's found in Blackboard. So let's go there and um, open up GSS. This is the data set that we have in SPSS open. This uh, data set has 840 variables, and it has a little bit more than 2,000 observations or cases. Uh, again, this is not the whole population of that particular data set, GSS. This is a truncated data set from the GSS 2008. Okay. The variable that I will be using uh, today to show you how we can do inference, inferences about um, one population or one variable is income underscore rest or the respondent's income in constant dollars. The idea behind our test today is that we have a claim from the government and that claim is that the mean income of all Americans has increased to $39,000. Okay, so now $39,000 becomes our mu or the population mean that we will test. So the null hypothesis now is that mu equals $39,000 and the alternative hypothesis is the opposite of the null and in this case will be that the mu or the mean population, mean income of Americans is not $39,000. As you can see the is not sign or different from $39,000 entails a two-tailed test. Okay? Is a, this this uh, hypothesis is a two-tailed hypothesis and we will test it with uh, SPSS. So let, let's do that now. And we're going to test this at the alpha of 0 0.05. Okay? That's our significance uh, level. To do this in SPSS, we have to go to the Analyze menu, move down to Compare Means, and then in the submenu, click on One Sample T-Test. Why One Sample T-Test? Because we have only one population right now, one variable, okay? Once we click there, we go to this One Sample T-Test dialog box. We're going to go on the left side to find our variable, and since I know that it starts with an I, I'm clicking on one variable at random and then press I in your keyboard to go to the variables that start with the letter I. Scroll down a little bit, find my variable, income underscore resp, bring it into the test variable by double clicking on it or clicking on this right facing arrow. And once the income, I mean income uh, variable is there, we're going to go to the options. When we go to options, right, we find that by default 95% is there for confidence interval. 95% is 1 minus alpha, if you remember. Right? And in that case, alpha is 0 0.05 or 5%, and that's our significance level. So when the confidence interval is 95%, significance level is 5% or 0 0.05, against which we will test this hypothesis. We'll take continue, and now we have one other very important piece of information here. Okay, we're finding the X bar for this particular sample, right? But what are we going to compare to? If you remember the T uh, formula is equal to X bar minus mu divided by standard deviation of the sample S over square root of N, right? What is mu? Mu is $39,000. X bar is the mean that we will find using this statistic um, procedure. So, in the test value field right here, we will type in the claimed mean. The claimed mean in the hypothesis is 39,000, therefore we will type that into this um, uh, field. And this is the mean that we will compare our sample mean to. 
OK. We click OK now, and we get the output window. The output window has two, two tables. The first table is a descriptive table. It gives us the number of valid participants, and that is 1,215. I told you that there are more than 2,000, but some of them actually uh, have not responded, have not been asked the question. So the valid number is of this sample is 1,215. The mean income in, dollar, in, in dollars for this particular sample is 33,245.29. As we can see, this is well below 39,000 that is claimed by the government. By the way, this whole hypothesis is just made up, is, is uh, fictitious, just to test this hypothesis. I don't know if they claim that. But we can see that this $33,000, that is the mean of the sample, is well below the claimed hypothesis. This sample now has a standard deviation of 78,499.540, which is a very large standard deviation. And we can probably see that this distribution is not normally, not, no, not normal. Another um, statistic here is standard error of the mean. And standard error of the mean, you already know now that standard error of the mean is a standard deviation of the sampling distribution, which can be found by using the formula of S divided by square root of N. So it's this standard deviation right here of the sample divided by the square root of sample size 1215, and that's what you get here as the standard error of the mean. Or the number of standard deviations that any value is away from the mean of the sampling distribution. The, let's go down to the second table, which is probably the most important one. Okay, this table now gives us a very important value, the t value. The t value is minus or negative 2.555, and that value has been um, found um, thusly. The mean of the sample, x bar, 33,000 minus mu, 39,000, divided by standard deviation over square root of n. You see how easy that is? All that we have done by hand can be done here in a, in a, in a second, right? So this is t. Now, when we know t, right, we need another factor, another coefficient here, which is called degrees of freedom in order to find the probability. Okay, that is associated with this t value. And the degrees of freedom, we've talked about it, and we said the degrees of freedom would be n minus 1. So it's this n right here on the top, 12, uh, 1,215 minus 1, that's the degrees of freedom, 1,214. So with the t and degrees of freedom, you could have gone to the table at the back of the textbook and find the probability, right? But SPSS gives that to you in a second. And the probability that we find, okay, that this t will be this much or more extreme is 0 0.011, or 11 in 1,000. Now, this is a very small probability and definitely smaller than 0 0.05, which is our alpha or significance level. And we talked about it when we said that when p-value is smaller than our alpha, we reject the null hypothesis and we accept the alternative hypothesis. And that's what we will do in this case. Because of the significance p-value in this test, 0 0.011 is smaller than 0 0.05, we will reject the null hypothesis and we will accept the hypothesis that the mean income of all Americans is not $39,000. We have enough and sufficient evidence to claim that we know that the mean income of all Americans is not $39,000. Now, is it smaller or is it more than $39,000? We can actually compare means here, but we have this mean difference number right here. And that is negative 5,754. Um, what that means is that because it is negative, it means that the mean that we got from the sample is less than the mean that was claimed, right? The mean we got from the sample, 33,000, is less than 39,000, right? And that's the difference right here. The 95% confidence interval of it is here for the difference, that this difference of 5,755, right? 
falls between the lower and upper boundary 95% of the times, or we are 95% confident that the mean difference falls between these two boundaries. Now, the 95% confidence interval of the true mean of the population is found by another procedure in SPSS, and we have talked about it. Let me show it to you again. You go to Analyze, go to Descriptive Statistics, and then go to Explore. This is the procedure, Explore procedure in SPSS. When you click on Explore, you find the variable of interest, which is income rest, bring it into the dependent list, go to statistics, make sure that this is 95% confidence interval, click continue. In this case, I don't want the plots, therefore I'm going to click on statistics, and then now I click on OK. When I click on OK, Explore produces this table that gives me the mean, again, which I found out above, but also the 95% confidence interval for the true mean of the population. So we are 95% confident that the true mean of the population or the true mean of incomes for all Americans will fall between 28,827 and $37,664. So continue to use the analyze compare means one sample t-test procedure to find out the inferential statistics about one population when sigma is not known.